EES, which is pronounced ease, is an acronym for Engineering Equation Solver. In the previous video, we talked about functions in ease. Uh, functions and procedures both use assignment statements rather than equations, and a major advantage of using these assignment statements is that they can include logic statements. And these logic statements then let you control the order of execution and make decisions in a way that's not really possible uh, inside of the equations window. Ease functions and procedures recognize several types of logic statements that will be described in this video. These logic statements cannot be used with equations, so they can't be used in the main code or in modules or in subprograms. The most common logic statement is the if then else statement. And Ease provides two formats for these types of statements. Uh, they're referred to as the single line and the multiple line format. The single line format has the form shown here. Uh, or here if you want to use an else statement. So the then keyword uh, and statement one are required, right? Uh, statement one can either be an assignment statement or a go-to statement, which we'll describe here in a second. Um, the else keyword and statement two are optional. Um, a single line if then else statement must be placed on one line with no line breaks, but there's no limit on the number of characters that can be used uh, in this line. The multiple line format has the form shown here. Um, again, you can uh, use these with or without the else uh, clause. Now, the major difference between these two formats is that in the multiple line format, uh, you can have one or more assignment statements or logic statements that are executed, whereas in the single line format, you can only execute one statement. Uh, the else and the end if keywords uh, appearing in the multiple line format uh, must each appear on a line by itself. Indentation should really be used whenever you're using these different logic statements to make the flow of the logic more clear. And finally, multiple line if-then-else statements can include additional if-then-else statements, so you can have uh, nested conditional evaluation if you need that. The conditional test uh, yields either a true or a false result, and you get that result using relational operators. Uh, the relational operators that you can uh, access and ease are summarized here in this table. So you have the typical, uh, you know, less than or greater than and so forth, and you have logical and and logical or. Parentheses around the um, conditional statement or statements aren't always required, but it's always a really good idea to use parentheses uh, in order to um, make the logical operations more clear, right? If you uh, don't uh, have parentheses, then ease will process the logical operations from left to right uh, in, in the order that, that it encounters these different um, conditionals. One thing to keep in mind when writing conditional statements is that all variables used in ease except strings are represented with real floating point 10 byte numbers that provide 20 significant figures of numerical precision. So ease doesn't uh, provide an integer data type in the way that a lot of uh, computer software does. And therefore, when you are using the equal to relational operator, you need to be very careful uh, because two values of, of a, a number may be very, very close to each other, but not exactly equal. So for example, uh, here's a function that compares A and B. <coughs> um, I'm comparing these two numbers using the equal statement, right? If, it, if they're equal, then compare equals 1, so the function will return 1, otherwise it will return 0. This function might produce some unexpected results because A and B can be extremely close to being the same number, but the conditional here, this equal, uh, is, is uh, likely to still evaluate to false rather than true. So in order to combat this problem, it's a better approach to use a range, right? So here I'm using a range, right? As long as these two numbers are within 1 times 10 to the minus fifth of one another, then uh, compare equals 1, else compare equals 0. Now, alternatively, you can sort of emulate using integers uh, by using the round or the trunk function. So the round rounds to the nearest integer, the trunk you know, truncates down to the integer below it. Um, so here I'm just rounding A and I'm rounding B. And, and then comparing those two integers. Right? So just keep that in mind. Um, you can also compare string variables uh, with these relational operators. So here I could compare the strings a dollar and b dollar. 
um, and you know return one if they're the same or zero if they're false and that's what that's what this function does and uh, you'll notice here that uh, these comparison these string comparisons are case insensitive right so if I change this uppercase a to a lowercase a I'm still gonna get a, a comparison that evaluates as true the return statement is another logical operation that's uh, important you can only use it within functions and procedures when ease encounters a return statement it's going to exit the function and procedure and control will resume at the point where that function or procedure was called so as a simple example we can use the return statement to develop a function uh, named friction factor that uses some logic to provide the appropriate value of the friction factor for fully developed flow in a smooth circular pipe given the Reynolds number so this function uses some correlations that are presented in the book Nellis and Klein um, and you should note that the heat transfer library in Ease, which is discussed in Chapter 12 of Mastering Ease, provides a much, much more comprehensive version of this and other similar capabilities. This is a very simplified version of what you can get from the heat transfer library. So for laminar flow, so the Reynolds number less than 2300, the friction factor is going to be given by this equation, whereas for turbulent flow, um, it'll be given by uh, this correlation and you'll notice this correlation has a range of applicability so you can't use it above this upper limit on Reynolds number so the function is going to begin by assigning friction factor a value that's consistent with laminar flow and then the return statement here will return immediately to the main program if we do in fact have laminar flow right so if the Reynolds number is 2300 if I get beyond this statement, then I know I must be greater than 2300, so I have to be in the turbulent regime, and I'll assign the friction factor a value using this correlation. Again, this correlation is only valid up to 5 times 10 to the 6, so I should check and see if the Reynolds number I provided is less than this upper limit, and if it is, then I'm good, and I should return um, and be done inside of this function. And then finally, if I get beyond this statement, I know my Reynolds number is above 5 times 10 to the 6, so I'm out of range of my correlation and I can do something like maybe return a minus 9 to indicate that the correlation isn't valid. And that's what I've done here. A, a much better way of dealing with this kind of a situation where you have inputs that are out of range would be to issue a, a, a warning or even an error. And you can do that using the warning or the error procedures which we will describe in section 3.7. So we can test this function at various Reynolds numbers and you can see that it's working uh, basically the way we expected it to. Ease will normally process assignment statements in a function or procedure uh, in the order that they appear. Right. So again, not equations but assignments, and assignments are processed sequentially. Right. And it'll start with the first statement and just go through them all. But the flow control can be altered using a go-to statement. So that's another logic structure that we need to understand. Uh, the format of the go to statement is shown here so it's go to and then a line number and line number then is a statement label that must be an integer number between 1 and 30,000 so statement labels then are going to precede uh, assignment statements and they're going to be separated from that statement by a colon you can also put a, a statement label just on a line all by itself if you want um, the go to statement really should be used with uh, something like an if then else statement in order to be useful so for example uh, here's a, a code here's a function that uses a go-to statement in order to calculate uh, the factorial of the value that's, that's supplied as the argument right so you know we, we come in with an argument n we set the factorial equal to one and we start with a counter here that's equal to zero and then we have a statement label 10 and inside of you know after the statement label we say i equals i plus one we multiply the factorial by i and then here we have if i is less than n so if our counter hasn't counted up high enough then go back to statement label 10 and keep going right so you can see what i've made here is a little loop that's going to keep looping until i is equal to n at which point i've calculated the factorial of the number right? we can test this fact function and compare it to the value that's returned by the built-in factorial function in ease and you can see that both give the same number looping within functions and procedures can be implemented in this way if then else is with go-to statements um, generally it's a lot more convenient and readable to use 
uh, another logic construct which is the repeat until construct so the repeat until construct has the format shown here so you'll put the repeat keyword you'll have a bunch of statements and then at the bottom until you have some condition that evaluates to uh, true right so this conditional test down here is the same type of conditional uh, that's used in if then else statements so we can take this factorial function, this fact function that we used, uh, a go-to statement to implement a loop, and we can just tweak it a little bit and implement it in a much more readable manner using the repeat until construct uh, as shown here, right? So you come in, uh, you'll notice the use of the return here. So if n is equal to zero, then I'm gonna return right away because factorial is one. Otherwise, I start the counter at zero, and I just repeat this operation of adding one to the counter and then multiplying the counter by the current value of the factorial uh, until i is, is equal to n. The repeat until construct, like all logic constructs, can only be used in these functions and procedures. So the last logic construct we need to talk about is the case statement. So case statements provide logical operations that are very similar to if-then-else statements, but they're much more convenient to use uh, then nested if then else statements when you need to use logic control to select from a large number of options or a large number of things to do depending on the value of a decision variable. So the, the format of a case statement is shown here. So you have uh, the, the case uh, keyword followed by uh, on the same line here the, the decision variable and this can be either a, an ease numerical or a string variable. And then the various options are identified with these case labels. So these are the various uh, values of the decision variable that based on the value, you're going to do something different. Um, each of these case labels uh, have the associated value of the case variable followed by a double colon. Um, if the case decision variable is an ease numerical variable, then the case labels have to be integers. If the case decision variable is a string variable, then these different case labels have to be string constants surrounded by single quotes. So the statements that then follow on the lines <coughs> um, after the subsequent case value are executed uh, when the decision variable matches that value. And so you can just choose among different actions based on different values of the decision variable. And then finally, uh, you can optionally at the bottom have an else label and that's going to be used um, to catch the situation where the string variable doesn't match any of the uh, values that you have um, listed here as case labels. And then finally, you have the end case keyword, and that, that completes the case statement. You cannot nest case statements. So as a simple example, here's a list of roughness values for different kinds of pipes. Uh, we might want to write a function that returns the proper roughness value given a string that identifies the pipe, right? So this is a perfect example of, of uh, a time where a case uh, logic structure makes a lot of sense. The decision variable is going to be the string pipe dollar, and then these different case labels will be uh, different uh, strings that identify the material. So if a value of pipe dollar is provided that doesn't match any of these labels here, then the function is going to return zero. And again, a better option in this instance might be to throw a warning that tells the user that you know you supplied a value of pipe dollar that doesn't match any of the acceptable values. So here we can test it. If I set pipe dollar equal to rubber, I'll get back the roughness for rubber, which is 0 0.01 millimeters. So this is one of a series of tutorials that is meant to describe the operation of the E software. If you'd like to get more information about Ease, um, obtain the software or access more of these uh, tutorials, please go to the website fchartsoftware.com. These tutorials are excerpted from the book Mastering Ease, which can also be uh, obtained from the fchartsoftware website.